Hey, I'm Laura Owen, and you're watching The Red Booth. Hi, I'm Kimberly. Welcome to The Red Booth Show. On tonight's episode, I have Laura Owen. She's an actress and a filmmaker. Plus, stay tuned to the end for our special feature on the new movie Money Monster that just came out this weekend. You get to hear from Jodie Foster, George Clooney, Julia Roberts, and Jack O'Connell. So come and join us. So hi, Laura. How are you? I'm awesome. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Thanks so much for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Thank you. I'm, I'm so excited about your, your TV show that you've been in and also you do filmmaking mm-hmm. and you do so many different things, mm-hmm. including um, Upright Citizens Brigade, which That's is right. awesome. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I've been... Uh, I've been I've been really busy <laughs> yes. since um yeah it's kind of a long a long saga of a story but yeah since I got to uh, LA it's been um I came here as an actress only and wound up going down all these different paths to kind of figure out you know how to how to move forward and and so many doors have opened up that I never thought would now when did you come to LA I've been here 10 years Okay. So I, yeah. Yeah. Where, where did you come here from? I am from Texas. I'm oh, a Texan. well, there you go. Yeah. She's a cowgirl. I'm a cowgirl. <laughs> I'm from Houston. And then uh, I went to college in D.C. From there, came out here. So, yeah. And um, actually, I attrib- I feel like L.A. is a lot like Houston. I know that sounds really weird, but it's it's so big and <laughs> so spread out and you need a car and you got to get around. So moving here, I felt like really at home. I just I just gelled with the space. Oh, that's cool. Mm-hmm. Just no scorpions here. No, way less bugs. <laughs> way less bugs. I'm very happy about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's really cool. So 10 years ago, you came out here wanting to be an actress. Yes. And what would you say, um, sort of like a summary of how you got to where you are now? Like you're on a TV show, a yes. recurring role, which yes. is Rizzoli and Isles. That's right. Good that's job. Very cool. <laughs> um, it's, it's um, okay. So a quick summary. Um from moving here, I didn't know what to do at first. So I was a waitress, duh, because that's what you do. <laughs> and um, I started. That's right. Tip your waitresses, guys, because yeah. they're probably yeah. going to be in a movie, and you never know. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. That's right. Um, and so from there, I started. I was auditioning, but I'm I'm really tall. You're a tall girl. I'm a tall girl. Yeah, we're like the same height, practically. Yeah, right? practically. Yeah, yeah. and it's, it was so awesome seeing how tall you are. <laughs> uh, yeah. So being tall, I, I I feel like it's just been hard. It was hard on uh, getting to the uh, getting an audition, much less like you yeah. know competing with. Yeah, because guys. the actor guys are so much shorter than us, and then they're like, "What are we gonna do?" And yeah, and it is like a situation. The whole Apple Box thing, and it's like, "But you're a nobody. Why do we have to pull out an Apple Box for this girl?" So, yeah. Yeah. So I I found myself standing in on the show, Rizzoli and Isles. And right. from that... And the girl that you stand in for yes. is... Oh, Angie Harmon. I stand right. in for Angie Harmon. She plays Rizzoli. Angie Harmon's amazing. She's fabulous. She's also a Texan. So, is she? Yeah, it's full circle. Yeah, right there. That's cool. Um, actually, it's more full circle. Wait for it. Okay. Um, I'll get to that in a minute. But I'm Adding a drum roll in post. <laughs> Um, so I, I, I worked really, I've worked really hard on that show and met a lot of people. And from that, I got into filmmaking, which is a whole separate thing. But I wound up convincing those guys to give me a part on the show through all of my hard work and determination. And here it is. I am a waitress on the show. So (laughs) that is the full circle. So in real life, you were being a waitress and now she's playing a waitress on TV. TV. So. Way so better. you kind of knew what it was like to be a waitress already. I could hold that that uh, tray, you know, like, yeah. I could kill it. Like nobody's business. Nobody's business. You have no <laughs> idea. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. So I know that you're in a, in a, in a diner in the show that mm-hmm. is like they always sort of go there, right? Yes. Yeah. It's the it's a spot where one of the main characters owns it, another main character manages it. So it just they always go there every episode. So. It's a big part of the show. Yeah. That's yeah. Cool. So you'll see me around in there and nice. it's, it's good. It's it's. A really it's it's been a blessing to be able to do that and um, but in addition to acting on that show the the um, the people that I've met and watching learning from the behind the scenes and everything has allowed me to branch into filmmaking which has become a whole other thing 
And That's right. Now you've got a lot of short films, and you've been yes. in festivals mm-hmm. and like all sorts of success with your with your filmmaking. Mm-hmm. So that's really exciting. Yeah, it's and the funny thing is, I never wanted to do it. I I feel like when I found out about that, uh, people were telling me, "Wow, the only way to make it is if you make your own thing. The only way to do it." And I was like, "Hell no! I am an <laughs> actress, and that's what I do." So I was like mad about it. Yeah, a friend of mine. Um, pulled me into a project. Well, I mean, there are people who just get, you know, totally. they just focus on acting and that's, and that's it and then do. that's what they get. And it's great. And yeah. God bless them and, you know, woo. But I, it just, and honestly, it just wasn't my path and I've seen that and so instead of like being angry about it and just going home, I thought, well, maybe I should listen to what these people are saying and I just so happened this girl asked me to work on one of her projects and next thing you know I realized I was really good at multitasking and juggling a lot of things and pulling people together and which is mm-hmm. very key uh, especially on an independent film short uh, yes. yes you have yes. to be able to deal with a lot of stuff my biggest project that I made myself I wrote produced acted and directed <laughs> my head explodes even just thinking about it but um, it's it went to festivals it won an award at the Houston World Fest um, a Silver Remy Award Ooh, and what was yeah, the name of it it's called Winged Feet Do Fly oh cool I have it on so Facebook so you guys should definitely go check that out yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have it on Facebook uh, but I don't have it out um, I do have a page for it Facebook right. you know winged feet do fly but it's not released but it's not released right because that's key for distribution yes. and all that so. yes so. and actually on that note mm-hmm. we have to break for commercial but we'll be right back I really wanted to put a deck on my house. The floor was creaking, and there were cracks in the wall. I had them put in walls in my basement. Well, the whole thing was done on time, on budget, and not a day of work was missed. Alpha Structural is a top-rate company. I'd recommend them to anybody. If you live in a hillside home and gravity is pulling you towards the edge of the cliff, I recommend you call Alpha. It was a real pleasure to work with Alpha. You've messed up your son's haircut. Mm, Mom? Do you A, try to fix it? Like it never happened. B, work with what you got. Or C, show solidarity. Thank you, babe. As a parent, there are no perfect answers. But you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. And welcome back to the Red Booth Show. We're here with Laura Owen. Hey. <laughs> hey. So this is cool. You've had your film in the festivals. You mm-hmm. won an award in Texas. Mm-hmm. And um, also, you have some other projects, too, that you're working on. Why don't you tell us a bit about that? Sure. Um, I, I just wrapped up a project called Amanda McKay. And it's about a young girl and her father. And she's an autistic girl. And oh, that's a hot topic right so now. So hot. Because it's such a huge growing number. I'm going to tell people. you, I had no idea yeah. how many people are affected by autism, whether it's their kid, their, yeah. their niece, or their neighbor. I mean, yeah. everybody. I mean, it's very sad. It's insane. I don't even understand how, how high the numbers have become. And it's no. ob- there's obviously something really wrong. So Absolutely. So I think this is a... this piece while I okay I came on this as only a producer and I will be acting in it if it gets picked up which is what we're hoping we're gonna hope to sell it nice. and so this was like a show piece is what we just shot right, right. Um, sort of like a sizzler sort of a yeah thing. and it's yeah. actually it's a full it's a full 30 minute piece so okay. it's it's actually can play as it's a full episode or the start to a feature it we could go either way right and it's um, and it's shot expertly wow. so it's ready to go it doesn't need to be redone I mean it's, it's ready and the, the little girl we got her name is uh, Farrah McKenzie and she is insanely talented I can't believe it and then her real father in real life is playing her father in the project oh wow and it's it's um, it's awesome so she plays this little autistic girl and it's all about their relationship um, and their lack of a relationship and then they they come together through their shared love of rock music and Guns N' Roses gets involved and the whole thing. So it's very exciting. Guns N' Roses? Well, we're working on them. But yes, that's, okay. the, that's the hope. That's where we want to go. If 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 not, it's okay, you know. But that's the that's, that's cool. what we're hoping for. But with the, regarding autism and as a producer putting the project together, so many people were excited to help out and do really anything they could to like from all aspects, from just getting a traffic cop to 
to help and uh, you know stop traffic or renting a location or whatever everyone when they found out what it was about really wanted to donate or do as much as they could for us it was beautiful that's amazing yeah how cool so i'm really excited it's in post-production right now i can't wait to see it so are you trying to go for a tv series or or feature more what are you well originally it's it's written as a TV series, okay, of an eight up, ep- eight to ten. Well, what do we have? <laughs> it's written as <laughs> it's a ten episode arc. Okay, so that's what we have. And however, because of my film background, I'm a real film girl. I could really see it going as a feature as well. Yeah, but as it stands now, it would be more on the TV side. And it could be, you know, Hulu, Amazon. Or even Disney, you know. It's, yeah. So I'm excited. We have to start shopping, and that's a whole other thing that I haven't learned, but I will. There's learn. a whole lot of avenues out there. So yes. yeah, that's definitely a, a specialty in itself. Yeah. As a producer, I'm sure that will be a fun adventure for you guys. Amazing learning experience. Yeah. 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 Well, cool. So um, now I know you said you learned about stuff on set. Yeah. And then you became a producer. Mm -hmm. What sort of advice do you have for people who want to get into producing? Well, you have to be able to juggle and and handle input coming in from all different directions and be able to be calm about it and take it all in and then give the answers back to the people who need it. It's um, It's like people management. it, It is major people management and you have to have skills to to communicate well with people and not be afraid. I, I don't like making phone calls, but um, sometimes I just have to like put on my producer hat and say, yep, it's a phone call day, and then it's okay. Then I can call, and I'm happy on the phone, and it's great, and then I can calm down afterwards. It's like, oh, that was that's over. But um, <laughs> you, just, you just have to, um, you always have to put the project ahead of you and be willing, like, for me, when I sign on to a project, I want it to be the best project. I feel like it's my baby, even if it's somebody else's and I'm just signing on to it, that um, that I'll do whatever it needs. And if there's some, not, for instance, when we were shooting this thing, um, we had everybody, we were taking everybody to lunch instead of having catering come in. Right. And we didn't have somebody to stay behind to watch the gear. So what do I do? I stayed behind to watch the gear. I wanted my crew to go eat and have a good meal, and I stayed and watched. And I think those those things, I think show people that you really care and make people want to work harder while they're all working together to, on a project. So those it's like small things like that, I think make a huge difference. That's really cool. Good tips. Yeah. Good tips. <laughs> and so I know you also have been doing um, the Upright Citizens Brigade. Yeah. And I love the Upright Citizens Brigade. People go there and get all sorts of practice. So fabulous. Being on stage. I'm obsessed with it. Yeah. It's um, well, first off, improv is so good for anybody, anybody. You should just do it. Um, and I've been doing improv for a couple of years. I was with Second City for a while. And then I just kind of migrated over to UCB and have gone through the levels there. And I'm about to graduate their final uh, level of performance. Wow. So I, yeah. When, when did you start over there at UCB? I started a year ago. OK. Mm-hmm. Well, that's not that long. No, and I've had to take breaks in between just because of my schedule. I couldn't you know, yeah. jump right on. Yeah. But um, it's been it's been amazing, and to get to perform on that stage and have a line, even for your the the smaller classes, you still have a line of people waiting to see you, mm-hmm. and that's where talent is really getting discovered a lot. I mean, a lot. So I like being involved in that, and the energy there is freaking cool. <laughs> that's okay. So what is it like being there? Like you sign up for the program, mm-hmm. and then they teach you certain things in the beginning classes, and was that like your first? being on stage sort of theatrical experience oh or? no I've been on stage for a really long time okay. for me for me okay a, a lot of people a lot of agents recommend that you do some sort of improv just because commercial people like to see that I I did improv years ago with groundlings for just oh just really a long time ago wow. yeah but back then I was angry and I just like <laughs> I didn't like it and I just was mad and I didn't stick with it so a couple years, yeah. Actually, on that note, we have to take a break. Oh! She was mad. What was, was she so mad angry. about? We'll find out soon. Come on back. I really wanted to put a deck on my house. The floor was creaking and there were cracks in the wall. I had them put in walls in my basement. Well, the whole thing was done on time, on budget, 
and not a day of work was missed. Alpha Structural is a top rate company. I'd recommend them to anybody. If you live in a hillside home and gravity is pulling you towards the edge of the cliff, I recommend you call Alpha. It was a real pleasure to work with Alpha. Start a story. Adopt at theshelterpetproject.org. And welcome back to the Red Booth Show. We are here with actress and filmmaker Laura Owen. Hey. Hey. <laughs> now, you were just telling us a bit about when you started at UCB and then yeah. when you were at Groundlings. Mm -hmm. And you were at Groundlings, you said you were angry. I was angry. I was Why just, were you so angry? I was just angry. I was just, I think that was back also when I was like only going to be an actress and not going to hear it from anybody. And then I was going to Groundlings and they were telling me, exactly how they wanted me to improv and I thought no it's funnier this other way and but that was you know I I don't know I was diff I was different I've definitely evolved since then and I think that they're hysterical but they have a very specific way of doing things and I don't know so when I decided a few years later to get back into it yeah oh <laughs> So when I decided a few years later I decided oh I'll try something different so I went to Second City and then I think my natural calling is UCB they're what would you say the difference is like in the way they do things? Definitely. The with Second City it's more sketch based. So okay. they do re improvisation. They they teach the whole basics are the, are the same, but they really do a lot of um, shows that are that are sketch, which are pre written and right, right. done. And then U C B is pretty much all I mean, they have some sketch as well, but it's more straight improv. Just totally winging and it. And I just I love that. Do they give you any like? Because I haven't actually been into the theater and seen the UCB shows. Oh my gosh, shows. you have to come. You have to I know, come I see definitely yeah. want to. Mm -hmm. So, um, but like, do they give you some direction? Like, okay, and they sort of throw something out there, and then you sort of run with it. No, or you how go. Does it you work? you ask the audience for a suggestion. Oh. And so you just say, give me a word, any word, and or you can you can prompt them like, oh, you know, what do you see on a you know beach but usually it's just like any word okay and you just have to go with whatever they give you and then you riff for a little while with your with your teammates you know okay. you'll, you'll do a um there are various openings but you can do something like where say somebody says peanut and you're like peanut baseball oh you're out and you do like this whole thing and then next thing you know you're improvising about something and it could go so obviously you could be riding an elephant you so know? You, you could be doing this by yourself doing a monologue do they do it that way or is it always with other people um sometimes there well there's always other people but yeah. sometimes you can do a monologue just to get going yeah and then the other people will fold in and you'll make you'll make scenes out of it that's really cool mm -hmm. well people should definitely go out and check out the upright citizens brigade that's in los feliz and i actually have a question now you got your film your short film into festivals you yes. won some awards yes what advice do you have for filmmakers who are trying to submit their short films to festivals where do they start how do they find them no problem well to start you want to go to without a box that's what i did without a box.com has pretty much every single film festival on there. It gives you their, what the film festival is about, their deadlines, all that stuff, and you can upload your video there okay. and nice. submit it that way. Wow, um, really? And it's so streamlined. Withoutabox.com. Yes, without very, a box. Very cool. And also, um, the other thing is, you want to do the biggest festivals first. If you, if you feel like your film is really worthy of accomplishing a major festival you want to hit those first because everybody wants a world premiere right and then go to the smaller festivals and if you have something that's your first film you just made and you're just excited to get out there then do whatever you want with it but if it's a film that you're you know really angling to get recognized with definitely aim for the bigger ones the bigger the better not not a lot of little small ones because that kind of dilutes it mm. Mm -hmm. that's the word on what the would you think is the best one to submit to first well I'm I'm obsessed with Sundance but yeah Sundance <laughs> is amazing yes. <laughs> but I think I think it also really depends on the type of film you have I mean Sundance is pretty parti or specific about their short films they have they have kind of wilder films or very genre based and so there's a number of festivals like Tribeca uh, Telluride um, um, Slamdance right Toronto there's a, I mean there's just a 
Santa Barbara. I mean, there's a ton. Yeah. Can. Oh gosh. <laughs> yeah. 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 Let's go. Let's oh, go to Can. Yeah. I and I, I had a film play there. Did you? And I had a short film play. Which? Uh, not. It wasn't in competition. It was in the short film quarter oh. or corner. Excuse me. So that's just for exposure, I guess. It's not, for exposure. Not for the competition. It's not in competition. But you, if you can get your film into the corner, the short film corner, you can actually go have two uh, passes and do the whole festival. And it was an amazing experience. Which film was that? I had a uh, film called. Oh my God! What was it? Oh, um, it's so LA. It's the very first project I ever worked on. With that's how I met Tony Toscano. Oh, so many things. Okay. So many things. Yeah. So it's called it's so LA. It's so LA. Oh my God! Yeah, that's the very first thing I produced, and I was an associate producer on that and worked uh, on that for a couple of years. And it, what that was. So was the a, very first thing you produced was in the can. Yeah. Well, no big deal, no, right? No big I even deal. forgot. Oh my wow, God! I knew I went amazing. to can, but I can't remember. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> but that that was a, had turned that started as a little series that we were doing online and then we wound up re editing it and making it into a short film to take it to Canton. And it's this quirky little thing. That's so cool. Yeah. I'll was check good. it out. Definitely. Okay. You're amazing. You're Thank the you're woman amazing. of many talents and you can go see her in the uh, restaurant on Rizzoli and Isles yes. serving in a diner, right? Totally. Kinda That's, like yeah, this. Like this. Very That's much cool. so. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, and I have um, all my stuff I keep on online, lauraowen.org. Cool. And then I'm on all the Instagram, Twitter surfaces, Real Laura Owen. Nice. So Real Laura Owen, and you can find her all on social media, mm -hmm. and um, you can also leave comments um, under our video. This also airs locally in Los Angeles, Orange County, Ventura, and in Las Vegas right now. But we are going to be putting this up online, too, so awesome. people can connect with you there. Sweet. I can't wait. Yay. <laughs> Thanks so much for doing the show. Thank you for having me. I'm really, I'm really happy to be here. <laughs> you are super talented, and I can't Thank wait you. to see what you're going to be doing next. Thank so. you. I can't wait to follow you, too. Thanks. <laughs> You'll have to come back later after you've been in like a ton of huge movies Duh. and stuff. Obviously. <laughs> <Duh>. <laughs> Thanks for watching Laura Owen on The Red Booth. <laughs>
um, and, and, and was very giving, you know, was, would, would, would make the time to talk in between takes and just take the edge off a little, because otherwise it can be a bit frosty in there. So, so yeah, good, good on George. Um, you know, and it gives me the time of day to this day, so I can't complain. Julia's lovely as well. Yeah, lovely people, and Jodie Foster, of course. Just boom him in, see what happens. Company for the last few months, hopefully you can listen to your little birdie. You got delivery? Don't move. This is a union thing. Oh, Jesus! Oh, Jesus! Cut Jesus! Turn those cameras back on! Turn those cameras back on! Jesus Christ! Whoever's in there, turn those cameras back on right now! I, I, I can't. Once I turn them off, you're lying! Up in his head! Turn those cameras off, Patty! Patty? Turn them off! Patty! Right, I'm gonna count to three. Okay. Right, and I swear to God, I'm do pulling something. this trigger. Patty. One! Patty, what do you want me to do? Patty. Turn them off, Patty! Two! Turn them what do you want me to do? Uh, put it up. You lost a lot of money when the market tanked. They tracked down his girlfriend. That was everything we had. Every last cent. What are you doing? I'm just trying to survive. I'll get you some answers. Nobody was asking any questions before. These guys could expose everything. We both want an explanation for what went wrong. We don't know. You have to understand how delicate.